What's up guys, it's me the Dom Fanatic and welcome to my draft analysis video of my Season 5 of the Pokemon Premier League uh, team. Now, just first of all, the fact we've got to Season 5 of the PPL is pretty damn amazing and the fact that we survived in Division 1 is also as equally amazing. In our case, we often get called out as a bad player. I'm basically just looking at Shardy at this point, but um, yeah. Uh, people may be doubting my draft this season, but I just want to go out there and say that it's my draft and that I'm looking forward to using it. And this video, I will try to keep short because I do notice a lot of feedback about draft videos, you know, kind of saying they're a bit long. So hopefully, I obviously I want to talk about each Mon. Uh, I have got nine to, to uh, talk about, but I hope hopefully I'll keep this video around 20, 25 minutes, which hopefully isn't too long for you guys. So rather than just rambling on, Let's just get straight into this. Uh, first of all, first round pick. I had the first pick of the whole draft. Now, looking back at it, I'm not sure whether it was worth taking this first round. Um, people are, when I watch the stream, people are saying, oh, this is an RU mon. I'm like, so RU does not equate to league format. I mean, look at things like, uh, I, I don't know, I'm struggling already. Um, no, there's lots of things in, you know, league format which are also good and Smoke and Tears, but there's also lots of things which are way better in draft format than uh, Smoke and Tears. Maybe Infernape, for example. I don't play much laddering stuff, so I don't know if Infernape's common, but just look at how versatile Infernape is, um, it stands out. So, let's just get into the team. First round pick, first pick of the whole draft, I decided to take Necrozma. Um, now, I took Necrozma mainly because uh, it's is a Mon, which can be which very versatile. Uh, maybe its move pool isn't the best to be a versatile Mon, um, but it is uh, one of few new Stealth Rockers. Uh, it does get Rock Polish, and pretty confident it gets Calm Mind. Maybe Swords Dance as well, so you do get the option of running a physical or a special Necrozma. He does have 109 base attack, and I think it's 127 base special attack. I haven't got the stats in front of me when I say this, so I'll try and avoid the stats thing. Um, but he can hit either side. He's also got very good bulk and a very, very nice ability in uh, Prism Armor, which obviously uh, reduces the damage taken by super effective hits. So uh, knockoffs will be doing a bit less super effective, so probably still doing a lot. Um, you know, it'll be taking less damage from super effective hits from like maybe some pursuits as well, pursuit trapping me. Uh, it's all very nice having that kind of ability. Now, he is versatile. He can be run defensively. He can be run uh, offensively. He can be mixed. He's also got that option of uh, running Trick Room. He is base 79 speed. Um, so there is that option of running Trick Room. Some kind of set up Trick Room set would be interesting to see one week, uh, nonetheless. So, um, yeah, I decided to pick Necrozma mainly because it's pretty versatile in what it can do. Um, the reason why I'm saying I regret maybe taking it first pick overall, there's undoubtedly better Pokemon in the draft format, which I could have taken. Um, you have got to bear in mind that some Mons that we would have been available to us last season, such as Megalopony, are not available to us at this moment because we are Wi-Fi League and obviously they're not released yet. Um, so the Crosno was my first choice. Maybe upon reflection, it wasn't worth the first pick, but I am very much looking forward to using it. Um, next up, second round pick was Cartana, uh, Origami. Cortana, sorry, and I also forgot to mention the Crosno is called Prism. There is a reason behind that. I think I googled Prism and that was a word related to it. So that's why it's called Prism. Next up, we have Origami, Cartana. Um, Kartana is a part of my Steel Dragon Fairy core. I say that loosely because Kartana is very much there to be an attacking threat. With all of the fairies that are around, I figured it would be nice to have. Now, I know its strongest steel attack is Smart Strike. However, I do have base 181 attack. Most fairies can't even switch into a Leaf Blade anyway. So, um, Kartana is base 181 attack. That's just ridiculous. I don't think there's within, like, even being close to anything in the league to having an attack stat as high as that. Um, so that's pretty nice. It's almost the same level as Mega uh, Mewtwo X, I think, maybe. Um, it's ridiculous. I know its move pool is quite shallow, um, but it does get enough coverage, in my opinion, to make it very versatile. We have valued it quite high. Um, again, it's maybe something that some other people may not have been interested in, so I could have waited to see if there were other things which could be more beneficial to my team. But I was also very interested in taking this thing and trying it out, because to me on paper it looks fantastic. It's pretty much a glass cannon on the special side. Um, 
I like that kind of thing. I do like having a glass cannon every now and then in my draft. Um, so Leaf Blade, Psycho Cut, Sacred Sword, um, Aerial Ace, Smart Strike, Night Slash. Um, it gets Defog, which is nice. It's one of my few Defoggers on the draft. People seem to overlook that. I appreciate Kartana isn't the mod you'd expect to have me, have me carrying Defog on. Um, the only thing I wish Kartana did get was U-Turn. Not sure why it doesn't, but hey, a Beast Boost as well is an amazing ability. Um, uh, there's no doubt Kartana's going to be getting some kills this season. Um, once it gets to plus one in attack, you can't get it to do plus one in speed. I think people have tried that. It's a shame, but Kartana, you know, on a, if you haven't got anything to outspeed Kartana, I'm just getting beast boosts. Better beware. So, Kartana was pretty much one of my main physical offensive threats in this, uh, this draft. That's one reason I drafted it. The other reason was I really wanted to try it out. So, next up, um, I wanted to continue my uh, kind of like attacking streak. So, uh, bear in mind I was first in the draft, so I got to pick Katana and something straight away. Now, I wanted another Stealth Rocker. I say that loosely, because this thing's primary objective isn't to set up rocks. I wanted some um, priority, and I wanted something that was fast, uh, give me momentum, and give me nice coverage. And that was Inferno, which I will mention is one of my free Z Move users. Now, before you say that, Katana, yes, uh, could have been a Z Move user. That may bite me back uh, later on in the season, we'll see. But in Fernie Business Z Move user purely because its coverage is pretty damn ridiculous. Obviously, we could have, uh, I'm going to forget the names here, we've got Inferno Overdrive um, and All Out Pummeling, which is Stab. Then you obviously get the Ground one, I um, can't remember what that's called. You get the Poison one, again, can't remember what that's called. With Gunk Shot, which is very nice for Fairies. Uh, you get st uh, Stone Edge. Uh, you get U-Turn, so again, Momentum, you got Stealth Rocks, you do get the option of Nasty Plot, you do get the option of Swords Dance, you get Mutt Punch, you get Vacuum Wave. Um, so it is set up as well, which I didn't mention. Now you can run it as Scarf, Banded, Specs, Focus Sash, Lead, you know, there's millions of different types of uh, Inferno sets you could run. And in this case, we've got the addition of Z-Moves as well. Inferno, it's probably something that'll be bought a lot this season, purely because with the Z-Moves, uh, it can maybe break a wall, it wouldn't expect it to be able to break. Um, maybe things like Bulky Waters with Bloom Doom. Uh, it does also get the uh, Gigavolt Havoc, so it does get Thunder Punch. Um, so it's all looking very nice for Infernape this season. I'm hoping that I can utilise it well. It's a Pokemon that I've always wanted to use in draft format and I'm really looking forward to using it. Um, so that was uh, my third pick. Fourth pick, again I had to wait a long time for this and Fairies hadn't gone yet. And I decided that now is probably the time to take my Fairy. Uh, again, I had a wheel pick, so I did get two picks in a row. I wanted to take Fairy because Fairies hadn't gone yet, and I wanted a more reliable hazard remover. Um, so I decided to go for Togekiss. Now, obviously, Togekiss doesn't have an element, uh, does indeed have an element of RNG around it. Obviously, with its power flinches, it does get Thunder Wave, but it does get Defog. Um, again, I know Defog recurring theme. Uh, it does get Roost, so Reliable Recovery is always something I look for in a uh, wall. Again, the Necrozma, another Pokemon that gets Moonlight and Morning Sun, so very nice for that one as well. I forgot to mention that. In fact, it does get Slack off. I'm not going to be using that as a wall, I don't think. Um, but yeah, we have Togekiss. It can hit really hard specially. I think it's got 120 special attack. It does get a nice little variation of moves, so it does get Aura Sphere, it does get Air Slash, it does get Flamethrower. Uh, I'm sure it gets other moves which I'm forgetting. Uh, Dazzle and Gleam, obviously for the stab. Um, Dazzle and Gleam, obviously very nice for many dragons that are around. Um, and again, I need a fairy because I need to take on those dragons. I don't think my team's too dragon weak. Um, then again, looking at it, not many things are <laughs> uh, going to match up well against dragons. So, luckily for us, some of the scarier dragons didn't get drafted, um, which is nice. I say scarier, I mean Salamence. Um, but, you know, it's always nice to have a fairy, uh, especially with flying, it takes care of bulky grass types that did get drafted. Um, it takes care of other fighting types, again with the fire, uh, the flying fairy, too many F types. Um, combination is something that I have to take on fighting types, again the Grosmer as well, but all very nice. Uh, it's also something else that I could run on Trick Room if I decided to bring a Grosmer, bring an offensive set, it also gets the Baton Pass, gets Wish, gets Nasty Plot. Um, not sure if it gets a speed boosting move or not. Mm, haven't looked into it that much. 
but it just seems like a mon. I did use it season one. I had it season one. Uh, you really can't remember much about that season. Um, I can't remember how well I used it. I think I ended up dropping it. But it's definitely a mon I feel like I'm better prepared to use now. Uh, oh, with the heal bell, I do like myself a cleric as well. So that's really nice. Um, so that was Tokus. Uh, fifth round, so like I said, I did get two picks in a row. I decided to take a dragon. Now, I still decided I need a bulk, and at this point, I could have taken Salamence. In hindsight, I think that may have been may have been better. I don't know. But it's again, this is another Pokemon I wanted to use, and again, it's something which I had in my mind which I wanted to use as a new user, and that was Gudra. Now, Gudra, on the special side, uh, is ridiculous. Um, it can tank hits pretty damn well. Um, 150 base special defense, got 110 base special attack. Physical defense is base 80, I think, but again, physical attack is 100. It's a immunity to grass. Um, its bulk is just ridiculous. Gooey is there for speed control if I feel like someone's team is too fast. Um, and I just wanted something that could tank hits and hit back, and especially with Z-Moves and its ridiculous coverage. Uh, it gets Muddy Water, so it can run the Water one, obviously it can run Devastating Drake, obviously it gets Sludge Bomb and Sludge Wave, or one of the two, so it can run the Poison one, which is nice for Fairies again. Um, it can run Iron Tail, so it gets Corkscrew Crash, like in Fairies. Um, Earthquake, um, what else does it get? It gets Power Whip, so Blue Doom. It gets all these kind of crazy moves, which I can use with Z-Moves and maybe catch people off guard. It can run physical, it can run special. It does lack that recovery. Obviously, I could run hydration. I mean, it has three very viable abilities in Sap Zipper, um, hydration, and of course, Gooey. Uh, so, it has got three very viable abilities. So, it can run Rest and Rain Dance if it wanted to. Um, so, that's an option. But again, it's bulky offense and maybe some kind of tank that I may need to call upon. I do have Wish Support in Tokus, and Tokus does have a decent HP stat. Um, so we can have the potential of Wish Passing, of course. Now, uh, that yeah, that's pretty much Gudra. I've wanted, again, it's a mod I've wanted to use for a long time. So looking at my draft at this point, um, it's not very weak to grass. I need bulky water. So who better to go for it than Gastrodon? Now, I picked Gastrodon because I decided I needed an immunity to electric. I'm not electric weak as a whole in my draft, but stopping people from vault switching around uh, is nice. Obviously, there's U-Turn as well, but not every mon gets vault switch and U-Turn. There's only a couple, Helisk and Tapu Koko, that I can think of. So, it's nice to have that uh, immunity. Um, again, it's something bulky, mainly more on the special side, but, you know, it's got that reliable recovery. It's a Scald user. Um, it gets Earth Power, Ice Beam, I'm pretty sure it gets Miracle and Counter. Um, obviously, it's something that can just sit there and tank hits, it's immune to electric. Um, obviously, it does like a, it does have that quad grass weakness, but again, it can be used as bait for Gudra. Kartana can switch in comfortably, and Fennec can switch in comfortably, Tokus can switch in comfortably. Um, so, you know, it, it fits in my team really well, sort of synergy synergy wise and hopefully it's a mon I can use well. I loved using it as Fidel Gastro uh, a couple of seasons ago in season 3. Uh, it worked really well the few times I did use it and I'm actually looking forward to using it again because it can tank hits. You know it's one of the mons on paper that looks a bit weaker than it actually is in real like real life. So I am again looking forward to using that. It's just a real shame it doesn't get stealth proc because that would take the burden off Infernic and the Cosmo a bit more. So next up round 7 um, I decided to draft my electric type. Um, Helios had gone at this point, sadly, otherwise I would have taken that again without a shadow of a doubt. Um, but we have got Electivire, and I will point out this is my super Z move user. So if you didn't watch the uh, draft analysis stream, or if you didn't watch the uh, specific rules video which des uh, described how we're going to run Z moves this season, it's very much experimental at this point. It may not be here to stay. Um, people do not like Z moves in particular. I am, for one, all up for Z moves. It will change the meta um, and it can really help turn the tide in the game. Uh, we've made it so it's only attacking Z moves on two of the three mons, and then you can use some um, other moves, other Z moves, like Z Party Shot, for example. Um, we've banned all the ones that give you plus one to every stat because they're just dumb and extreme Evo boost, but you would require to have an Eevee on your draft for that, so again, that would be 
maybe a fair trade, but, you know, plus two to everything, and then Baton Pass is just dumb. So, anyway, back to what I was saying. My Super Z, use, Z, Super Z Move user is Electivire. Now, the main reason for this is the fact that Super, as Rykrin quite rightly pointed out in the draft stream, is it does get Electric Terrain. Now, Electric Terrain, or all the terrains, have gotten much more usage this uh, sort of generation. Obviously, thank you to the Tapus. Now, Z Electric Terrain gives me plus one speed. If I can switch in on a motor drive as well, switch in, you know, get that Electric Community, get that plus one speed. Um, electric Terrain will give me plus one to speed, and obviously it boosts up all the power of electric type moves. Now, that's scary. Electivire's got base 123 uh, physical attack, and base 95, excuse me, base 95 special attack, which is the same as Tapu Koko, and you see how much damage special Tapu Koko does with a life orb. Electivire is a bit like a much slower and maybe and a lot more versatile. Obviously, it gets Volt Switch so it can still turn in and out. It's able to use its wide variety of moves. It gets Cross Chop, Ice Punch, Thunder Punch, Fire Punch, I'm not sure of, but I'm pretty sure it gets Flamethrower. Um, it gets Earthquake. It, you know, all these Z moves again it gets. It's that variety which I really like about it, um, which means that it can, you know. I mean, just take a giga, giga, I can't even do it now, you can't take, I can't say it, but you know, imagine it, electric attacks, wild charge, thunder punch, under electric terrain, or thunderbolt, volt switch, um, I haven't got many other things that can abuse it, I mean, I do have uh, Gudra, who might get thunderbolt, uh, and Necrozma, who I think gets charge beam, that could be an interesting thing, um, but yeah, it's something with a bit of speed, I say a bit of speed, I know it's not the fastest thing in the world, but it's got enough speed. Um, where I can run a choice craft, I can run uh, Z electric terrain if I want to. Again, I could just run a normal Z move um, because it does have that wide move pool that is able to, you know, utilize these Z moves to its full potential, how it feels. So, um, yeah, it can be mixed. Um, it's obviously got Volt Switch, and again, I've got Infernape with U turn. I have got another um, sort of mon that can U turn uh, Volt Switch about coming up so having kind of like a core of three things that can bolt switch and new turn is always nice for momentum um, and it just hits hard and I, while I feel like maybe you know Ryan and myself have given away a secret or two it's probably not even that secret they could use the electric terrain I'm sure everyone would have that in the back of their mind when preparing because you know if you're not prepared for it it's gonna run through your team I know Electrify is not the strongest um, but it's something that could really work if you don't have a ground type on their team so yeah, I'm really looking forward to using Electivire. Again, another one I've wanted to use for a while, and I'm in the camp of that Electivire still has potential. It's not completely rubbish like people say. So, round eight, um, only two mons left. We do need a kind of speed demon at this point. The fastest Pokemon is Kartana, which is 109. Um, so we need something that can really, you know, skyrocket my speed tiers a bit. So, um, looking back at the PDWC, Pokemon Draft World Cup, um, I had huge success with Mega Beedrill. Bearing in mind this was before Gen 7 came out, when Gen 7 decided that it wanted to, you know, get rid of the need for Protect to run on Mega Beedrill. It's amazing, because obviously when you Mega now, you get your Speed Boost Turn 1, and your Ability comes into effect uh, Turn 1 as well, so don't need to worry about having to run Protect anymore on Mega Beedrill. And I could see the fact that we've put it so much higher in pricing this season, uh, I think it went up by 4 to 14, um, is ridiculous. Obviously we do get that U-turn, we do get, uh, it doesn't get Leech Life, which I thought it did, but never mind, it still gets Exorcism, so it's the same amount of damage, just don't get to heal. Obviously with the influx of fairies, I'm pretty sure every single Tapu, apart from Lele, because fuck that thing, we banned that straight away. All the Tapus have been drafted, you've got your Fable. You've got your, uh, whatever ones, I've got Togekiss obviously, Florgeous, don't think it was drafted, but Aromatisse was. All of these fairies that are floating around, obviously you've got bulky grass types and Tangrowth as well. Um, I can't remember if Shaman was drafted, don't believe it was, you know. Um, but Mega Beedrill hits like a truck, it gets enough, say enough, it gets just enough sort of coverage in Drill Run to hit them Steel types and Rock types, which otherwise it would have difficulty hitting. It does get Knock Off, which is a huge 
kind of thing for me because I don't actually think I have a knockoff user other than Mega Beedrill. Maybe Electivire and Infernic. I uh, that don't call me stupid. I don't know if they do. I need to do some research, but again, it gets knockoff. Um, again, it might be a bit less viable this season knockoff. I say that very loosely again because Z moves can't be knocked off, Z move users can't be knocked off, Mega Stones can't be knocked off. So. Two out of the six mons may not be able to have their items knocked off. Again, there is four, I know, but it all depends on your matchup and whether you think you can be able to knock them off. So, um, yeah, it's got the coverage. It does get Toxic Spikes. It does get Defog. I say that again loosely. Thanks for pointing out. But it does get Defog. So I've got three Defogs now. Um, not that I'm going to be using it against Roost if I really want to. Obviously, this, the fact is Swords Dance. Agility if I want it. Uh, Bell Stinger is something very interesting. Now I have that fourth move slot open, you know, picking something off with Felstinger, getting to plus three attack. Yeah, good luck switching into Mega Beedrill at that point. Um, it's just something I feel that speed, uh, sorry, the speed and ability buff has given it. The fact it frees up a slot in its attack, obviously if it's worth increasing it by four points, I feel like it could do a lot more in the season. The speed boost as well, I mean, sorry, it's just natural speed of 145. Pretty much means that the other team has to carry a choice scarfer or has to have Mega Aero, which wasn't drafted. Um, so it's going to outspeed everything other than things that are either base 150. I don't think there's anything like 146, 147, anything like that anyway in existence, or a choice scarfer. And the fact that I'm going to be bringing someone to bring a choice scarfer every week. Uh, lets me play around it a lot easier because I'll be able to lock into moves. I've got a number of immunities on my team. I've got a dragon immunity. I have got a two electric immunities and a ghost immunity. So I say a number. Not that many, but, you know, something I can play around. Um, I want a poison immunity in Kartana, obviously. So, I've got a few immunities that I can play around with and force some choice scarfers. Obviously, I can bring my own choice scarfer as well. So it'd be nice trying to force people to use that, and if they don't, then they're going to have to rely on speed setup, which requires turns or baton passing. So again, it could be something that's going to be quite hard to try and outpace, and if it's not a defensive mod, it's probably going to die to a poison jab or an accident or a U-turn. So Mega Beedrill, I'm really excited to use this season. Um, I, I know it's becoming a cliche at this point, but it's a Pokemon I've wanted to try for a long time in this format, but I now feel it's the time for it to shine. So my final mon, and it's the mon which I'm probably not liking the most pick wise because after watching the PPL sort of um, draft analysis video by Trip and Bird, um, they quite rightly pointed out some things about my draft and there is a mod which uh, Trev did point out which is in the back of my mind maybe it's a transfer I can make um, but we'll get into it now anyway and I am actually really looking forward to using this thing and it gives me a huge trick room option uh, in Ursa Ring. Now it's got base 130 attack, it gets Guts and it gets Quick Feet and I think it gets Unnerve which is also very nice because it's a very viable ability in League format because you do see a lot of them berries running around. So three very good abilities. Um, guts obviously if I feel like I just need to break walls I'll bring Guts Facade. Um, this thing's actually rather bulky so it can take hits. Um, uh, I could also run Quick Feet, which gives it basically a Scarf, but the ability to move up moves. Now, Guts is amazing with the Flame, the Burn nerf. Um, obviously, I won't be taking as much damage. I have a switch in to school. I say switch in to school. If I, if I get burnt, I don't care. Um, obviously, Toxic still remains the same. But with Quick Feet, I do get. I work this out. I can't remember what it is now. I, I become. I am able to outspeed base 95s. I know that. Because the Earthswing isn't the fastest. Um, I can't remember if I have to be base 100 or not. Maybe. I haven't got the mass in front of me anymore. But um, Quick Feet if I want a speedier option. Guts if I want a powerhouse option. Obviously, Facade off of base 130. Uh, attack stat. And I think Facade will be base 140 at that point. It's just nuts. With Stab as well. That's not even bringing that into factor. And not many things resist normal. Obviously, you've got your Ghosts, you've got your Steels, you've got your Rocks. But otherwise what's the switch in um, and it also gets the coverage for your rock and steel types in close combat uh, earthquake it gets play rough uh, it gets some of the elemental punches can't remember which ones um, probably gets stone edge as well um, not really something that concerns me uh, because well if I'm hitting a flying type 
I'm going to hit them with facade. So it gets enough attacks. It also gets sword stance if I really want to be spooky. Um, I have got the Tom Pass options on the team with Togekiss. Um, but I'm not sure if it really gets like a speed boost kind of move which I could utilise, which is a shame. There's also the chance of a nasty plot pass into a special Earth Ring. But we'll save that for another time. But the thing I was talking about earlier with Trev and um, Bird, they pointed out that maybe something like Steelix would have been more useful. It would give me a much more defensive uh, Dragonsteel Fairy type. It would give me another Stealth Rock option. Um, it does give me a Sturdy Mon, and it also gives me something, you know, it's it's another ground type, it's another electric resist if I wanted to bring it. Um, and there's lots of electric types, it's kind of like a staple to have an electric type in draft, just because they're fast, and they can hit decently hard, and they can just get in and out of Volt Switch. So, um, that's something to consider, it's something I will consider going forward, we'll see how Ursaring does. Again, it's actually another point I don't have to point out, it's something that I feel like could really benefit the Trick Room, which... I can run with Necrozma, it's not the fastest thing. Again, Togekiss and Gudra aren't the fastest things. Gastrodon isn't the fastest thing. I can make Electivire work on the Trick Room as well. It's not slow, but it's not fast. Um, so yeah, this is my team for the season. I have got one uh, million left, uh, which I can obviously keep in the reserves. I didn't want to make a mean pick, because in my opinion, mean picks are a waste. Um, what's the point? And then you're going to be forced to drop it later on to take your money back, and that's a waste of the transfer. So. What's the point? Um, so that's my draft done. Uh, I said I'd try and keep it to 25 minutes. I've done 26 and a half minutes, so not too bad. Um, let me know what you guys think of the draft below. I also want to apologise that I know the layout looks nice other than the uh, actual picture of the Mon. I was going to record the screen of my 3DS, um, but because there's no national Pokédex in Sun and Moon, I would have to have genned all the Mon in and then done them that way, and I just don't have the time to gen all these mons as well, so um, I've put all the PNGs in there, um, and that's why they're there. So thanks for watching this video guys, make sure you leave some comments on what you think of the draft, how you think we'll get on this season, um, Shardy, uh, I already know what you're going to type so don't bother, uh, and YouTube room. Um, so other than that, I've rambled on long enough. I will see you guys for uh, week one, which I believe will be up by the, um, I'm checking here, the 3rd of April. Uh, which is uh, just two weeks, just under two weeks away, so get hyped for that, guys. Obviously, make sure you also check out the PPL channel as well, because we have got analysts who are very clever and very knowledgeable of the format, so they'll be able to give you a lot of advice on how to perform yourself if you want to maybe do a league yourself. I really am rambling now. Um, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you for week one on the 3rd of April. I uh, hope I'll get some other videos up before then, um, but in the meantime, I hope you stay well, and uh, see you guys later. Bye!